Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Among the countless developments taking place in the military industry, much of the dedication to these advancements has been focused on the creation of improved artillery and airborne ranged weapons. A good example of this has been the Hellfire missile, or AGM-114, which has given the U.S. Army a tactical advantage since its implementation in the 1980s. The need to create a precise weapon capable of countering the armor of tanks and other structures led to its development in the late 1970s. which focused on implementing guidance technologies and improved propulsion systems. Therefore, Hellfire missiles use a semi-active laser guidance system to locate their target and can be fitted with different types of warheads. This, combined with their capacity to reach distances of over six miles, made them an intimidating weapon. Its usefulness has led to the creation of different variants over the years. using other technologies to be effective in specific cases or to replace older models. For example, to improve the weapon's use in bad weather, the AGM-114L was created, which uses guidance based on millimeter wave radar rather than laser like the original model. Other variants, such as the K and N variants, use different warheads, such as thermobaric warheads, which improve the missile's effectiveness and power. However, new designs, such as the R variant, seek to reduce the number of variants by creating a multi-purpose missile that can deal with different types of targets. Regardless of the variant, the Hellfire has also stood out for being compatible with a wide range of platforms, from fixed-wing aircraft and UAVs to ships and ground-based launchers. However, even with this adaptability, Hellfire missiles are often used from the AH-64 Apache. This aircraft has been an icon of combat helicopters since its conception in the mid-1980s. It has since completed more than 5 million flight hours for the U.S. Army, in addition to being used by armies of other countries such as Japan and the U.K. Its extensive use by these forces results from its effectiveness and armament variability. In addition to the aforementioned Hellfire missiles, the Apache includes a 30mm M230 chain gun and Hydra 70 rocket pods. This does not include the advanced avionics that have been adapting and evolving to the needs of their time. With this variety of tools, the complexity of its preparation for a mission also increases, especially in the assembly of Hellfire missiles. During these preparations, hangar crews take advantage of the Hellfire's modular system, which consists of four launchers installed on hardpoints on the sides of the helicopter. During this phase, the hangar crew installs each missile using locking lugs. Considering the advanced avionics, the crew must verify the connections between the helicopter and the system.
These installation steps are similar across the various missile models, influenced only by compatibility with aircraft versions, as is the case with the compatibility between the AGM-114L missile and the AH-64D Apache Longbow. Like other Apache variants and evolutions, the L version of this aircraft was developed to implement new technologies to enhance its tactical capabilities. In this case, it uses the AN-APG-78 Longbow radar and General Electric T-700 engines, resulting in a successful model that encouraged its continued construction and improvement by Boeing at its facilities in Arizona. Here, the installation process focuses on the assembly of each subsystem, including the fuselage, stub wings, and avionics. These processes have become more efficient as upgrades have been released, with Block 3 being one of the latest. The productive effectiveness of these facilities is also demonstrated during the assembly of recent versions of the Apache, such as the AH-64E, which has focused on improved communications and integration with UAVs. Once these helicopters are manufactured and are inside the hangars of the military forces, the crew and specialized technicians must resort to common preparation procedures such as loading the weapons, including the Hydra 70 rockets mounted on the pylons of the subwings. What's up? And the machine gun ammunition located in between the main landing gear right under the helicopter's fuselage system. Hey guys, change your this preparation is then carried out by the crew, consisting of the pilot and the weapons expert, who sit in tandem inside the aircraft's cockpit. I know how you know how to do this. A loose plastic From here, the pilot maneuvers while the gunner handles the Apache's various weapons. In the case of the Hellfire missiles, the launch process includes target acquisition, missile lock-on, and firing, taking advantage of the digital display and integrated sensors. When launched, missiles like the Hellfire achieve great precision in controlling their trajectory depending on the target's position thanks to their control surfaces and electronics, which is one of the reasons why they are so effective. The technology behind weapons like the Hellfire missile demonstrates the dedication to developing new weapon systems to improve the quality and effectiveness of the Air Force. Many of these creations involve adding new features to existing aircraft and increasing their mission utility. This is true of systems like the Harvest Hawk, which functions as a weapons and sensor kit that can be installed on the Super Hercules. This enables it to provide air support and surveillance capabilities in addition to serving as a transport aircraft. Including a fire control console and NA AAQ-30 target site system, this kit comes with a launcher for four Hellfire missiles and a 10-shot Griffin missile launcher in the cargo compartment. Its installation requires an expert team, as it involves both mounting the missile launchers on the left-wing pylons and installing the radar on the aircraft's external tank. Considering that the kit uses Hellfire and Griffin missiles, 
the aircraft has greater versatility in terms of the targets it can engage. A lightweight missile like the Griffin is best suited for precise attacks on light vehicles and lightly armored targets, while the Hellfire offers a better option as an anti-armor weapon. Furthermore, with the Harvest Hawk's modular capability, the launchers can be deployed on either the Hercules's wing or in the cargo bay, giving the system versatility. Although this also requires careful installation and ammunition loading, it also involves internal modifications to the aircraft, such as the inclusion of a Derringer door system to maintain air pressure inside the cargo bay. With these additions, the loading and firing procedure follows similar structure to other aircraft, involving target acquisition tools like radar, which helps gunners use the fire control system with greater precision. This integration with radar systems has become particularly standard with various missile systems today. Systems like the MIM-104 Patriot use technologies like the AN-MPQ-53 radar array to track targets that will be hit by its Pac-2 missile. Thanks to the system structure, the Patriot can track and follow more than 100 potential targets at a range of more than 60 miles, constantly monitored by three operators at the control station. These workers are part of a larger team that handles the setup process of the entire structure, which involves installing the radar. control station, missile launchers, and power supply units. In all cases, military personnel must consider the location where the Patriot will be deployed, consider a stable terrain, and ensure that the system is not exposed to attacks. Once the Patriot is installed and the checks to ensure its proper operation have been performed, the control station team remains alerted if the radars detect any threat. If a target appears within the range of the Patriot, the control instruments calculate the best trajectory to intercept, which is immediately followed by the missile launch. This weapon will move along the route calculated by the control station, giving it the precision that makes the system effective. Suppose greater agility is required in anti-aircraft defense systems. In that case, the military has also taken on the task of developing technologies such as the Avenger air defense artillery. which, although short range, is mounted on the chassis of a Humvee, providing constant mobility over different terrains. Additionally, the gyroscopic stabilizer allows it to launch any of its eight Stinger missiles even while the Humvee is moving. In addition, its integration with the FLIR sensors allows the operator of this defense system to ensure that the target is hit with a low risk of failure. However, not all threats are found on land. In some cases, naval forces are also at risk of attack. Therefore, Similar defense systems have been implemented on warships. Such is the case with the Aegis BMD, which uses standard Missile 3 interceptors and a SPY-1 radar to locate enemy ballistic missiles. Its potential has allowed the Navy to project its use for a wider range of targets, including medium and long-range ballistic missiles and even hypersonic missiles. 
This system can also be deployed on coasts to provide enhanced defensive capabilities to sites of interest like ports or military bases. With the enormous time devoted to developing and improved attack systems, the U.S. military has achieved incredible results. With examples such as the Hellfire, whose versatility and power have been key to maintaining an advantage for these military forces. In addition, other developments have allowed the emergence of a wide variety of missile systems, which have not only provided a greater offensive capability, but also have allowed them to be used for defensive operations as interceptor devices. It remains only to be expected that other technologies will emerge in the future that will drive the creation of other tools like these. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.